this is me. I'm just your average 20 something guy with a cracking smile that has a bike that's smaller than your lawnmower. And in all my wisdom I have decided to tour through one of the most beautiful countries in the world, Scotland. Welcome to part two of my journey and join me as I barely move in Scotland. Last time I stopped off in Edinburgh on my journey north and saw the sights before setting my gaze to Inverness in what turned out to be a somewhat longer journey than expected. I got lost. But I made it in the end, and in today's journey I'm going to be heading into the very heart of the Highlands in what is going to be my most amazing adventure yet. So as I found out, my planned journeys were somewhat longer than I expected, so I decided to head off early to give myself a good head start. Now the weather today had improved greatly compared to what it was like the day before. I still have PTSD and wet socks from that. So here is today's plan for the journey ahead. I would hug the coast north for a bit before veering sharply into the majesty of the highlands before heading to this small fishing village of Loch Inver, where I'll be spending the night. The total journey would be about 140 miles of spectacular lochs, mountains and my Honda's favourite pastime, hills. Now Scotland is famous for many things, haggis, tartan, Ewan McGregor, and last but not least, whiskey. And unbeknownst to me, I passed the famous Glen Morangie. Glen... Mara? Glen Morangie? Glen Morangie. So I thought I'd pop in for a look. With 99 million cases of whiskey exported from Scotland each year, the whiskey industry is certainly one of the first things that people think about Scotland. Now I'm cheap, there's a reason I'm travelling around Scotland on a vehicle that gets over 100 miles to the gallon. So for that reason I didn't go for the tour but I deployed my drone for a better look. And then went and had a look in the gift shop. I don't actually like whiskey so uh, it's not much here for me so I got back on the road. Now I will say this about Scottish weather, dramatic. So far my journey I've probably seen about 20 rainbows. I should probably drive away from them so I don't get soaked. But anyway, I drove the last few miles up the coast before I made my turn into the heart of Scotland. Now with only 250,000 people living in the Highlands, petrol stations are few and far between. And on my bike I only have roughly a one gallon tank, so I made sure to bring a jerry can. Now even though my engine was only 90ccs, I was pleasantly surprised with uh, how well my Honda was coping. Even though I couldn't get to top speed on some hills, why would I need to? And why would I want to and miss all this? became more rugged and spectacular with every mile as I went deeper into the heartland. And if I had to use one word to describe it so far, all I would say is jaw-dropping. Well, after a long day of riding through some of the best scenery, I finally made it to Loch Inver and checked into my digs. Not before the heavens opened up, but hey ho, you can't have everything. Something, on the other hand, would be good, as when I settled in I thought I would go out for some dinner. But what they don't seem to mention in the brochure is that getting dinner in a tiny village during a pandemic, outside of the tourist season, would be difficult. But hey, not to worry, there was a pie shop! 
it was shut. But never fear, there was a restaurant, it was fully booked. But wouldn't you know it, there was a pub that didn't serve food. So I sat in a dimly lit pub, eating packets of crisps next to a blaring TV with the mellow sounds of BBC News. Now I'm making this sound bad, but actually the restaurant was doing a takeout service, like most restaurants these days, so I was only in the pub 20 minutes and my dinner was really good. So it was time to head back to the hotel and prepare myself for the next day of riding. With the rising of the sun signalling my departure, it's time to get going on what is the fourth day of my journey. Today will be an easy 140 miles southward down the west coast which is going to provide me with some of my best views yet. Before arriving at my overnight destination, the quaint and somewhat isolated village of Applecross. I say isolated because between me and my fish and chips I'm planning on eating tonight is the Balakhnaba. A narrow mountain pass snaking over the Applecross Peninsula, filled with hairpins and is also the steepest ascent of any road in the UK. So, should be easy enough. But before any of that, just a reminder that if you are really enjoying this video, please leave a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel and don't forget to click the notification button so you get notified when my next video comes out. Okay, now onwards to my first destination of the day, Ardvec Castle. Resting on the serene banks of Loch Assynt, the 16th century ruin is most famous for an act of Scottish hospitality, or should I say lack of hospitality. The story goes that the royalist, the first Marquis of Montrose, sought refuge here with Neil Maclaud of Assynt. Only Neil was out at the time, but his wife Christine was in who then tricked him into the castle dungeon and sent for the authorities. He was then carted off to Edinburgh where he was executed. The Scottish hospitality industry has since bounced back. Now as my journey continued, I was treated to some absolutely spectacular views which made me remember this fun fact. There are more people in the world who claim Scottish ancestry outside of Scotland than there are currently in Scotland. And I can believe this because as my Honda was effortlessly cutting a path through this remarkable land, I noticed something. It's empty. And that's not a bad thing. When you do find signs of life, it's usually worth a stop. So that's what I did when I passed the signs for the Falls of Misak. Just after I parked, I bumped into some more people interested about my Honda. Yeah, can't it. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. Oh, will do. Thank you. Are you two running together? No. No, no. <laughs> and after a brief convo, he's a big dog. <laughs> What's his name? Is it Scooby Doo? No, unfortunately it's not, and we should have called him that. It's called Henry. Oh, wow, lovely. <laughs> You're nice as well. <laughs> and a perilous bridge walk over the chasm of death. Pretty amazing views, by the way. I was about to set off, but ended up getting into another conversation about my bike. CC's, that's all you need. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, very good. You too. I wouldn't be able to think of another vehicle that would draw the same amount of interest as my noble Super Cub. Now, hugging the coast, following nothing but my amazing sense of direction. Okay, set my sat nav. Uh, I learned my lesson from the last time. I was again treated to something unbelievable. A vehicle slower than mine. But in all seriousness, this coastal drive had been one of the best I had ever done, and I didn't think anything else could top it. Oh, how I was wrong. It was after filling up in the small town of Kinlochu, and I turned right, which led to an amazing stretch of single track road that looked like something out of Jurassic Park. Mountains on every side, a setting sun and a light drizzle led to some absolutely breathtaking.
taking views. Although some people weren't enjoying the road as much as me. Well, like all good things that come to an end, as I had reached the beginning of the Balakhnaba. Twelve miles of steep tarmac, hairpins and spectacular views on a road that seems more reminiscent of an alpine pass in Switzerland. Not for the weak of heart, motorhome or caravan, this mountain is between me and my fish and chips so it's time to finish my journey. Let's go! My Honda made short work of the foothills and offered me some amazing panoramas on my way up. Also Bambi popped by to say hello. Anyway, my Honda powered up the hill with ease. Until we came to the first hairpin. So I chucked it into first and moseyed on up. With the biggest challenge my Honda has ever attempted complete, I parked at the top to bask on the views my little Japanese bike has afforded me. And if you thought it was good before, wait till you see this. With the Isle of Skye in the distance, backlit by the setting sun that was being reflected off the water like a mirror, Scotland had made quite an impression on me that day. My stomach, on the other hand, begged to differ. The only impression it wanted was that of traditional fish and chips, so I got on my way. I headed down the mountain pass, basking in the light of the setting sun, and before I knew it, I had arrived in the village of Applecross. Calling it a village might be an exaggeration, as it was only one row of houses, but it had all I needed, a fish and chip truck. <laughs> Could I order some haddock and chips, please? Yeah, of course. I ordered my dinner, spoke to the locals who were amused with my bike. Well, you Where do you come from, Uh, yeah. South Shields. Um, the South Shields. Shields coming in. I hardly believe that. It's a fun thing, though. And you and the hand of the bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, then, <it's> like that. <laughs> then sat down and enjoyed my reward. As I looked out over the water, I planned my journey for tomorrow, where I will be heading to Skye next time on Barely Moving. And just a reminder, please leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to click that notification bell to get reminded for my next video. See you later!